Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So, I think we need to we need to have some real talk. All right, this I I actually kind of gloss over this topic. I didn't really talk um, extensively about, or I I didn't actually give a definite answer um, to whether or not the Mari pack is actually worth it. So in this video, I'm just gonna explain um, first of all from my perspective, and also from you know I'm gonna imagine myself from the perspective of. Uh, you know, players that are just playing casually, and then from the perspective of, you know, players that have actual money to spend, alright? Uh, so, this package is worth 990 astrogens. We're gonna just round this up and say it's a thousand astrogens, alright? Uh, 10 astrogens isn't that big of a difference. This just makes it look like less than what it actually is. You know, it's like that little, little trick they use um, whenever they're selling stuff in stores where they they like this this uh, this item is 899 or some something like that uh, it just makes it basically makes it seem less than it actually is um, but it, you know the 10 astrogems if you buy enough packs it does actually add up like 10 becomes um, you know if you buy 50 packs it becomes 500 astrogems which is actually quite a lot but we're gonna just for the sake of calculation to make it easier we're just gonna round up and say this is about a thousand astrogems all right um, so for a thousand astrogems, you basically you get this, you get one one copy of this water Mari, um, a little bit of gold, some energy, and a six star chest. I think the gold is mainly just made for you to basically feed this monster into um, you know into itself in order to make the evil three. It kind of um, pays for itself in a way to, to actually make the evil three. Um, the gold you will have a little bit left over because you know if you're actually no if you're um, I, I forgot the actual cost for Evolving Evil 3, but it, it is quite expensive. I, I can I can just like I take a look at the random um, number or something like that. Like I'll, I'll take this Hana for example. I'll, I'll I'll pretend to feed this Fire Hana into it, itself. So it's like 30k, and then if you do this um, three times, that's like 90k, and then and then plus the 70k over here. And then if you make an evil two, evil two one, like you're if you're feeding an evil two into an evil two, um, I think it's also a lot more expensive than thirty k. It becomes forty five k, and then um, one hundred and thirty five k. So I, I I guess the it kind of adds up. Um, you, it kind of pays for itself in a way uh, to to make this monster like evil three, like to to feed it into evil three, and then you will have like. Um, probably half of it left over afterwards, and you can use that money to maybe you know raise that this monster to six stars or something like that. So the pack, if you buy it, kind of pays for itself. It pays for it pays for making this monster um, six star. It makes pays for making this monster evil three. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, is the the other thing is the one hundred energy, which actually you can use to to farm up a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna what I'm trying to say here is like it's the the bonus stuff that you actually get from this pack is actually not worth that much. Maybe the hundred energy kind of cancels out for maybe a, about um, you know thirty um, forty ish astrogems. Yeah, forty 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 ish astrogems. We're just gonna do, we're just gonna do some bro math here. All right, we're not gonna actually do real calculations. We're just gonna round everything. Um, we'll we'll say it's about like forty ener energy. So it, it kind of becomes you know nine hundred and fifty or something like that. Um, and then you get a six star chest, and six star chest normally they give you just really really shitty gems, which averages to maybe about twenty k or so, um, which isn't too much because it'll, it'll kind of like you know compared to the three hundred thousand gold, it's not actually a lot of money. So this is actually pretty negligible, like the the six star chest. Um, most of the time it just gives you really really shitty gems, and never it never gives you anything good. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's basically it for for the pack. Um, just you know, you, you basically get this. Now, the, the, it's not really worth it. Like it's it's nowhere near the value of nine hundred and ninety astrogems. But the thing is, like if you buy the pack six times, you get this um, you get this light dark egg, and if you buy it twelve times, you get a heroic egg. I heard I think it was thirty times to buy to get the uh, the the light Mari, and then like fifty times to get the dark Mari, and then they're, they're guaranteed um, variant versions of the monster. So if you buy 50 times, you'll be guaranteed a, a dark variant Mari, which is actually the um, if you buy 50 times, you know if it's a thousand per pack, then that's five fifty thousand astrogems, which uh, basically oh shit, I just just like almost burped for a second. Um, basically, it's 
it's about like it you can you can do like eight heroes fest with that amount of astrogens um which is the equivalent of quite a lot of six stars and for a normal player like even for a player that's that's not like a whale that grinds hardcore like me there i'm i can like i i can't get near that amount of astrogems like that is just impossible it's it's completely unreachable for me um for a player like me it's you it's just it's just not possible like it's it's physically impossible for me to farm that much astrogems and the only way you can get that many astrogems really um is to just pay real money like you have to be a whale to be able to um, buy this pack 50 times unless you've been saving astrogens for like the past three four months then maybe you have enough astrogens but like honestly most people have part do participate in heroes fest so they use up about like six thousand astrogens for heroes fest um and they you know you'll, you'll need to have six thousand astrogens for the heroes fest and the the value of buying this um six times which is the equivalent of six thousand astrogens is not really worth the same value of a heroes fest and here's here's why um if you take a look at the Mari, they're actually only 4-star monsters. So uh, what this means is that 4-star monsters actually do not have the same stats as 5-star monsters. Like everyone's looking at the Water Mari like, oh, it's a it's a budget water purse, you know, it just has less HP. But, you know, uh, the moment I saw her stats, I was just like, I instantly noped. I, I, I didn't even bother. Like the moment I saw like 2,400 recovery, I was like, this, this monster's done. Um, <laughs> she's... She's not going to heal for too much, like, she's going to heal for, if you put, like, three life gems on her, um, she's not even going to reach, th th uh, ten, she's not even going to reach ten, wait, yeah, she's not even going to reach a hundred K, um, health, even with three life gems on her, she's, it's just, you can't, you won't be able to reach that, actually, wait, maybe you can, with a life set, maybe, my math is really bad, maybe with a life set, you'll have, you'll, you'll maybe just hit ten thousand, uh, which, Basically, it means you'll be he healing, you know, 10,000 a turn. Um, compared to the Water Purse, who has, like, 3,200 um, base health, plus, like, much higher attack and defense. I mean, wa the Water Purse has really, really bad recovery as well. The thing is, like, she's an actual nat 5, so her stats are actually a lot better at, at max. Like, she, she actually has, um, you know, 6,000 more base health compared to the Mari, which... If you add all your gems on top of that, like the percent HP gems on top of that, that's actually quite a lot. Like that actually adds up to, to quite a lot of extra HP. And um, this this monster just with the with the lower HP is just completely uncomparable to the water purse. Um, even even an evil two like an evil two water purse um, is comparable to her. But the the thing is like. Think about think about the cost to actually make her evil three. You you have to basically um, get the pack sixteen times. So at the very least, that's sixteen thousand astrogems. Or you uh, well actually no, you only have to buy fifteen times because they give you a light dark one for free if you want to feed the light dark one into her to actually make her a usable passive healer. It's very very expensive. It's one thousand six hundred astrogems, and with that amount of astrogems, you can you can pull. Um, you know, you can pull during the Heroes Fest, you know, twice, like two, two and a half times, um, you know, to, to do, you can do quite a lot of pulls in, during Heroes Fest, and th I think with 6,000 Astrogens, you're pretty much safe, um, I wouldn't say you're guaranteed, but there's a very, very high chance that you'll be able to get two Nat 5s during that time, and those Nat 5s will eventually, um, go into your, you know, Evil 3 Nat 5 that you're going to be making in the future. So uh, what I'm trying to say is like the for in a in terms of um, a, a late game perspective, like if you're trying to invest resources um, into a monster for late game, she's just not worth it because she's a mediocre version of a monster that is much much better. And if you if you're patient and you hold out for enough heroes to fest, you're definitely able to. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say you're guaranteed to get a water purse, but you're gonna get something like that's that's very very strong like. It might not exactly be the water purse, but it's going to be like something uh, equivalently strong. Like maybe you'll get a fire Odin or, or something else. Like just something that that will be you know top top tier that isn't considered um, a tier below what's the what's the top what's the highest tier. You know you'll you'll be able to get a monster that's going to be um, considered something that's like super super OP. So that's 
that's the kind of the point I'm trying to make out. It's not a it's not a worthy investment for you to try to raise this monster at all because with 1,600 or 1,500 astrogens, you will be able to pull quite a lot. You'll definitely be able to get quite a lot of nat fives um, during that time. Even if you don't use the astrogens for pulling nat fives. Um, it will actually help your progression quite a lot because with the amount of astrogems um, that actually is you know convertible to, to gold if you use the astrogems to farm for gold then the the gold can actually help you progress you can upgrade gems with that gold you can six star monsters with that gold you can do a lot with that gold instead of um, putting that gold into this this uh, mediocre monster and if you're thinking about using gleams to get her to evil three, like you're 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 just you're just absolutely insane. I, I I don't even know how, I don't even know what to say at that point. Um, the light Mari, I mean, she has higher higher defense than the light Victoria, but her a lot of her stats are actually wasted on recovery. If you compare her to the light Victoria, the light Victoria, although has lower um, defense, has higher effective HP because of her her base HP being much much higher than than the Mari. So I think a lot of her stats are wasted. Um, you know, she would have been a actually a monster that might be worth it if you know a lot of her recovery went into HP instead, and then she she basically becomes like a a better version of the Light Victoria. But even even you know like you know with this with her stats like this, um, I, even with her stats being slightly better than the Light Victoria, I don't know if she's really worth the price because she is actually quite expensive. In order to get her, you obviously. Um, a chance to get her is to is to buy the pack ten times, and then you'll be able to get her once. You can use um, you can use four of her to three of her to make her evil two, and then the other three to make her. Oh wait, no, you have to buy it, buy it six times. Yes, buy six times. My bad. Um, you can use three of her to make her evil two, and then three of her with twelve gleams to make her or or nine gleams to make her evil three. Um, but that's like nine gleams used on a on a monster that isn't necessarily going to be, um, you know, super super good. And I'm I'm already saying this that I'm I'm like kind of pretending that her stats are better than the Light Victorious, and and still saying this like she's not really worth the price even if her stats are slightly better than the Light Victorious. But with her stats like this, she's completely not worth it because her effective um, HP is much much lower than the Light Victoria. And you already you already know how squishy the Light Victoria is on. On defense, she basically just gets melted instantly. Um, so, in my opinion, she's not really worth it. I mean, you. I think the only reason you might want to be getting these monsters is just for collection purposes. Like, if you really like the appearance of these monsters, then I guess that's kind of the kind of the only reason to to really get them. Um, this is a, this is the Dark Mari. The Dark Mari has Battle Rush and uh, Predator. Which kind of makes her, it, it makes her, it makes her kind of, kind of decent. Like she's actually a really good monster. This monster is actually quite strong because she, although um, for farming purposes, she might not be as good as the Dark Mona because her battle rush is only twenty percent, meaning that her bar is not going to get full as much. Um, but she actually is better for farming farming harder maps. For example, if you're planning to use her for farming Slumbering City. Then she can actually self-sustain, and you can put her in as a full nuker, and most of the time she will be able to survive. So that's actually one of the benefits to using her instead of the Dark Mona. Um, the other benefit to using her is she doesn't necessarily require a square slot because you can actually put a lot of damage on her, and she will be able to do. Um, she won't be able to deal consistent damage, which actually is not good for farming because in farming you want to be able to do do consistent damage. You want to know exactly how much damage you can do in order to one shot the monsters that you want to you want to actually kill um, for the same reason if you're using this monster in dragons as well you want to make sure you do the exact amount of damage you don't want to accidentally like crit when you don't want to and then push the dragons HP over 50% if you're trying to do that strategy um, a lot of you guys might not know what I'm talking about if you but if you ever watch any of my dragons v10 runs you will you will know what I'm talking about um, <laughs> Basically, this this monster um, has its has its pros and cons compared to the Dark Mona, and um, I I think the pros and cons kind of even out. Most most of the pros and cons kind of even out. It's I don't think the monsters are exactly comparable because it's like it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges. But this monster by itself, um, I think is a is a really really strong monster. But she's also extremely expensive because for the same price you will have to. 
um, by the pack six times and you're not even guaranteed to get this monster and if you don't get a square slot on this monster I still think this monster is kind of mediocre like it's if you're putting triple attack on a predator monster um, there are actually better like better monsters because you'll be wasting her crit damage if you're if you if you're using a monster that um, that has like triple attack predator you might as well use something that that has higher base damage for and if you're not trying to rely on the crit something like the the uh, the fire gin for example basically has higher damage um, a stronger morale boost this is also based on damage so you can actually get like you know if you're hitting like really weak units you can actually get like 50% of your bar back just from this morale boost depending on how much damage you're dealing to the enemy unit and it also has a you know also has a predator as well so um, it's kind of it's kind of comparable. I think the two monsters are definitely comparable. Um, the the dark one is definitely stronger. It has thirty percent only, so it's not it doesn't have as strong as a predator. But the crit damage from the dark kind of makes up for it. So I I I know uh, some people think since it's predator, you might not need a square slot. But in order to maximize her potential, I still think you need a square slot on this monster um, because you'll be otherwise you'll be wasting the the dark um, crit damage, obviously. Um, I don't know. I think it's a it's a personal thing because I I do really like my dark monsters to have a hundred percent crit when I'm using them on arena when I'm using them for dragon. Um, it's kind of the two places where I use them for tower of or yeah tower of chaos. You you don't necessarily need a hundred percent crit because if you don't crit, you just try again and then you, you kill the monster the next turn. Um, but for dragons for for uh, for arena offense, if you don't crit on one of your attacks. It basically, like, it could literally lose you the fight in a lot of arena offenses. Um, and in dragons, a lot of times if you don't crit on your attackers, then it means one extra refill, which is like 10 astral gems every single time that you don't crit. So I'm a, I'm a pretty big advocate of 100% um, crit on dark monsters, but obviously, you know, there are, it, it, it's not, it's not 100% needed, um, depending on what you're using her for. If you're trying to use her for, um, you know, just farming and stuff, you might not exactly need 100% crit, but that also depends on what you're farming with, because if you're trying to farm like Star Sanctuary, for example, and you want to, um, you want to one-shot everything, then I think even without the, uh, even without critting, if you build triple da triple attacks, you actually might have enough damage to one-shot everything, but if you're, um, building like a, maybe a full siphon team for Skyfalls or, or Slumbering City, then you will need that, you will need that reliable damage, because every time that you don't crit, um, it basically means you have to, your team has to waste one more extra attack, which basically gives, increases your farm time by another five seconds. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm a big, big advocate of 100% crit. I just, I just think it makes things much, much more reliable. And, um, you know, over a long period of time, if you're farming, for example, it, it does add up, like five seconds do add up, and eventually it becomes one extra run, and that one extra run can can maybe get you more sigils, more gold, more whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, is, is the Dark Mari worth it? I mean, obviously, it's a, if you're trying to trying to get her, um, you, can get, you can get the pack six times, and then use nine gleams in order to make her evil three. I think if you... If you really want to try, um, if you can get the, the light Mari obviously isn't worth, but it's like a 50-50 chance because you'll either get the light one or the dark one, and then the dark one without a square slot is still not reaching her max potential. So you're risking quite a lot with 6,000 Astro Gems. So obviously if you're guaranteed to get her with 6,000 Astro Gems with a square slot and use 9 Gleams to make her Evo 3, I still th I think she's worth it. She's definitely worth it um, at that point. But the thing is, you're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed a score slot. You're not guaranteed to um, get the dark one. And it's like if you don't, you're just you're just completely fucked, you know. Um, so that's why I think it's kind of too too big of a risk for you to to try for this monster. It's kind of the same reason I didn't get the light tiger because he he wasn't guaranteed to come with a score slot. So. Um, like, can you imagine buying the pack 50 times? Like, you're a whale, you buy the pack 15 times, and then you get you get your Dark Mari, and it has no square slot. Like, can you, can you just... Like, I, I cannot imagine the tilt, like, I, I would be getting, like, after spending, like, 2,000 US dollars or so to, to get this monster. Um, and it coming with no square slot. But yeah, that's... I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the review of the monsters. But in, in terms of, like, buying this package, um, 
it, it really depends. I think the only people that can afford to buy it, it that are not like super super whales are the people that maybe have some astrogem saved up and maybe just buy the pack six times to see if you can um, see if you can get the Dark Mari with a square slot. Like I think that's the only only way it would be worth it. Like if you get a Dark Mari with a square slot, it's the only way that it would be worth six thousand astrogems, or else it's just not worth because. Um, you know, she's not a... The, the other ones are just not not good enough, basically. Like, not, not really worth the price. Um, as for purchasing it 12 times for the heroic egg, I don't think... I don't think this is really worth it, because if you think about it, you're buying this... Um, you're buying this six more times. So, it basically, it, it saves you... It saves you six gleams, so if you buy it 12 times, you only have to use three gleams to make whatever... Um, light dark version you have to get get to evil three, but uh, six thousand astrogens basically for to to save three gleams. Or if you think about it, six thousand astrogens for three gleams and one heroic egg. If you're trying actually trying to make this monster um, evil three, it's it's is actually kind of worth it. Um, so what I would say is the the twelve time the twelve pack is only worth buying if you bought the six pack. Like if you if you just you know, if you if you had some real fucking, I don't I don't I don't I don't want to like tempt people into it. Like, but if you're if you're if you're like a man a man amongst men, like and and you you just you just went ham and you bought the pack, like as a as a non whale, and tried to get that dark Mari with a score slot, and you actually happened to like you really actually got it, then it's actually worth buying the twelve pack because you can save uh, six leams. And you can save. Uh, you, you basically get another Nat Five for free. So I think if you, this is only worth buying if you got a Dark Mari with a Square Slot on your six pack or something like that. Uh, that is that is pretty much it. That's just my review of the uh, the Dark Maris. I gave my reasons. Um, you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. Obviously, this is just my opinion. Um, I don't have the box of all the like everybody. I don't. I don't. Have the exact same monsters of everyone. Like maybe you have a you have a shit ton of Dark Mona, so you, you might not need that monster. But um, I think just mo that monster by itself, if if you can get it with six thousand astrogems, is is worth. But there's a there's a catch because there's there's a fifty for fifty percent chance that you either get the light or dark one, and there's also a uh, another another uh, another role where like you you might not get one with a square slot and that that could totally fuck you over well it won't fuck you over that bad because she is a predator type so like you could kind of do triple triple uh attack and she'll be able to farm up to like star sanctuary no problem but uh if you want to farm further than that if you want if you really need the best of the best the most reliable like for farming sky falls or farming um slumbering city like, cause if you if you if you're trying to build like a full siphon, um, slumbering city farm team, you you definitely do want all your units to be able to deal the same consistent amount of damage every single turn, because if you have a team that can um, boost up their bars, obviously I don't have that many siphon gens, but this is all theoretical. But if you say for example you have a a gen, um, a fire Siegfried, and then like a you know a, maybe a light monster with morale boost that can tank. Um, Maybe maybe the light monster doesn't need to one shot. I'll, I'll put in like a light Victoria as well, and then the last monster you put in the Dark Mari. Um, you you want to be able to basically on first turn like boost up your bar enough, and then on second turn um, with all your AOE's you know deal the exact same consistent amount of damage in order to um, you know one shot or clear the whole entire wave. And then this way, when once you get to the second stage. Um, you can repeat that process over and over, and you can get a really, really fast Slumbering City farm team because it's not possible to one-shot um, the wave with one monster on Slumbering City. They're just way too tanky. I think you need about um, three monsters in order to actually one-shot the wave. So you want all three of your monsters to be able to deal a consistent amount of damage. Um, so that's why I think she's actually not at her full potential if you don't get her with a square slot. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, 
That was a very, very long rant, but it's just a rant about what I think about the Mari package and if it's really, really worth it. Um, if you're if you're a regular, normal, casual player that started the game, like don't buy this. It's way, way too expensive um, for you. But if you're like a super late game player and you have like, you're not like me, because like I, I'm short on on astrogens. But like if you're like, I don't know how. But actually, no, no, I, I do know how. But like, if you're a player that uh, has been farming golems, because I, I don't make that much astrogens because I'm usually farming on story maps in order to get dragon sigils. It's kind of what I'm what I'm aiming for at the moment. Like, it's actually what I what I do uh, about 99% of my my game time is just farming story maps in order to get dragon sigils. Um, I I don't make that much astrogens, but I can see someone that's like that has a a B10 team, um, you know, kind of as fa as fast as mine, um, farm constantly farming golems B10, or even someone that's like has a super fast golems B8 team, constantly farming golems B8 in order to make like a shit ton of astrogens. Like I, I can definitely see that happening. Like some people might have um, quite a lot of astrogens because they're only farming B8 or something, for example. Um, I do see that maybe a late game player like that might be able to afford the package after, um, obviously after they save up enough for Heroes Fest because Heroes Fest I still think it's more important than buying the actual package. But if you have like six thousand left over, um, and you 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 have the balls to do it, like to actually you know, there's less than a fifty percent chance that you're gonna get what you want uh, <laughs> to actually try for it, then. Yeah, um, I guess I guess you can try for a Dark Mari with a square slot, but that's that's pretty much it. Like that's the only thing that's really worth the six thousand astrogems. And if you do happen to get it, I think the twelve pack is worth it because you basically save yourself six gleams plus a um, a heroic egg, like a bonus heroic egg. So that's that's just what I think. Like it's it's a there's there's a really big if. Um, I, I don't think it's worth the risk. I personally don't think it's worth the risk, so I won't I won't try to buy it. And also, I can't afford it because I don't have that much astrogens. Um, I'm just a I'm just a regular scrub. All right, I only buy the 30 day pack and the Heroes Fest ticket. Like that's really all I buy. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, and also, if you're a whale and you, you're thinking of like buying this pack 50 times, just know that your dark Mari, that the one that comes on the 50th package, might not come with a square slot. You know, just I'm I'm just saying you, it might not come with a square slot. But anyways, I I think that's pretty much it. Um, I actually do have a theory. I think this is the last last point I'm gonna make. Um, I have a theory of what the what, what 40 33 is trying to do. Um, I got a comment yesterday of um people saying that they're trying to devalue the value of astrogens to try to try to make this, you know, uh, because everyone's farming so many astrogems. But I don't think that's actually what they're trying to do. I think this this pack, this thing is going to become a reoccurring thing in the future. And what's going to happen is, in order for them to force the whales to buy these things, the first Mari, obviously they can, couldn't make it super OP, but they had to make it somewhat good. So players would be like, hey, uh, maybe I should get this, or maybe I shouldn't. But... Uh, in the future, they're going to start having some like more expensive packages. Maybe it'll be twice as expensive, and instead of a Nat 4, it's going to be a Nat 5. And it's going to have, like, I don't know, Double Hunter or some shit like that. It's going to be like a 5-star version of the Dark Mandragora. And you're going to be like, uh, you know, you know, maybe maybe we should buy this. And then the whales would have to buy it. And then, you know, it, the game becomes... Um, like, like whales actually still win the game that way, you know, because whales pay for, if you, if you guys don't know this, um, for mobile games, the top 1% of, of like, people paying for the game, like, basically pay for, like, 90% of, of everything, like, 90% of the, 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 the game's profit, basically. So it's that 1% of whales that are, that are paying, like, insane amount of money on this game that's actually keeping the game alive. So obviously the game needs to... I, it can't exactly be pay to win because obviously people won't play it, but it needs to be... It still needs to be pay to win enough for the whales to want to spend money on this game. So I think... Um, I don't think it's too unhealthy. Well, obviously, like, if there's a if there's a way for, like, free-to-play players, like, you know, maybe you can buy the six package and maybe you have a chance to get it or something like that, um, compared to, like, someone whaling where they can, um, where they can, 
spend like you know four thousand dollars on the game and instantly get a like a guaranteed you know dark monster or, or whatever um, then I, I think that's still okay maybe I'm not too sure I'm not like it could be su it could it could be super unbalanced I have no idea like if they actually do introduce a light dark nat 5 that's like twice the price of this and uh, has like double hunter or some shit like that then I I'm, I'm not too sure but I think that's what they're trying to do like they're, the next package the monster in the next package is gonna be more OP than this one and then the one after that is going to be even more OP, and then it's just going to become more and more OP um, until you're forced to have to buy this. Like if you're a whale, you're forced to have to buy this, and in order to to be competitive and stuff like that. I think I think that's one of the strategies of what they're trying to do. Um, I don't have any good or bad thoughts about this. I don't think it really affects me all too much, but obviously. Um, <laughs> The game can't be like super super pay to win. Like there, I think the the game is really nice because it make it makes um, you know like astro gems and stuff are infinitely farmable. So you can actually farm as much as you want, and you can progress as fast as as possible if you have the fastest farming team. And that's actually what excites me um, about Monster Super League the most. So I think even if they if they're like you know dominating the top of the arena charts, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm never gonna be refreshing arena tickets in order to get to number one. Maybe I will like one of these days. Like I think maybe one day when I have like my perfect arena defense team set up. I'll I'll just pretend I'm a Korean overlord and just waste like you know five thousand astro gems that week just refreshing until I become number one. I can just be like, hey, I've reached number one before or some shit like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe, 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 maybe one of these one of these weeks I'll try it. Anyways, um, that is that is pretty much it. Um, so yeah, hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this clear some things up. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of if you really want to go balls deep and try to try to gamble with your Astro Gems or if you just want to play it safe like you know like me because I'm a pussy all right I'm a pussy I admit it I, I'm I can't I'm not that manly I can't I can't gamble on something that's like lower than a 50% chance but I, I do see some people trying to that, that can maybe do it um, but it's, it's very limited, like, it, there's a lot of ifs, because, like, you, you have to be someone that, first of all, you need to have enough for, to be able to farm fast enough to get those Astro Gems, and second of all, you need to be someone that's farming Astro Gems constantly, or to have that many Astro Gems, and you need to have enough, at least, for Heroes Fest, because I don't think it's worth sacrificing Heroes Fest for. And then fourth, uh, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a gamble, like, you, you're not guaranteed to get a, the Dark One. And fifth, it's not guaranteed to have a square slot, so there's a lot of ifs there. But I, 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 I see, I maybe, maybe someone, someone's brave enough to try it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.